Hey, this is David Benjamin from HealthyWildAndFree.com. Today on the Healthy Wild and Free podcast, we have Jenna Keen with us. She is the Chief Operations Officer at True Dark, and we are going to get into the nitty gritty, the science, the research behind uh, light therapy, as well as uh, the dangers and uh, sort of un- what to understand and how to avoid um, dark light or artificial light. Uh, blue light, the the sort of dangers behind that. So uh, Jenna is the, uh, once again, Chief Operations Officer at TrueDark. They create eyewear technology that helps block blue light, which is also known as artificial or junk light, as well as optimize the human experience through biohacking the circadian rhythm to get it back on track. We live in a world full of artificial light, and in today's interview, we'll be shedding light, don't worry, it's the good kind, on this nice. topic. <laughs> Jenna also happens to be the sister of the well-known biohacker Dave Asprey, uh, also the founder of Bulletproof. Jenna, thank you so much for taking the time today. Welcome to the Healthy, Wild and Free podcast. Uh, I'd like to first ask you, uh, how did you get into this world of uh, sort of artificial light and, and uh, the research behind this? What kind of sparked your interest? Sure. So thank you, first off, for having me here, David. I'm, I'm happy to be here sharing with your listeners. Uh, so I actually come from a financial services background, like stock market derivatives. So this isn't something that I was born into or anything crazy like that. Um, I got into this because as science changes, and as you mentioned, uh, Dave Asprey is my brother, and he was sharing with me, hey, there's some news out there around new discoveries around what impacts the human circadian rhythm. It came out in about 1998. And no one's making, no one's using this new knowledge. They're using knowledge in science from the 1970s. He's like, we should do something about that. And I said, I would love to help you do something about that. So I learned a little bit more about um, light from Dave. And then I realized that I was already living it. So my husband and I lived on a hobby farm on the eastern side of Washington state. And one of the things we raised was sheep. Now, when you raise sheep, you really don't want to have lambs in the middle of the night. So we had learned from other shepherds and other um, farmers around the world that light is incredibly impactful and important uh, for animal circadian rhythms, which dictate when they have their babies. Is Hmm. it in the middle of the night or is it a more natural time in the morning? So I realized that I had been living in this world of circadian rhythm and light impact for years, because if you shine a light that has the blue and the green spectrum in it, on a sheep at night, it messes it up and it will start having its babies in the middle of the night instead of in the morning. Hmm. Uh, wow. Same thing with chickens. So if you have chickens that lay eggs, they will stop laying eggs right around October if you're in the northern hemisphere, and then they'll start laying eggs again come right around April or May when the days get longer. However, you can get a chicken to lay eggs year round, and there's a moral question about whether that's okay or not, but we're not going to go into that here. Um, you can use light in order to extend the chicken's day, and they will lay eggs year round. So I wow. was living this natural thing, and if it's impacting sheep and chickens, imagine how it's impacting humans. So that's why um, I came over and um, helped get True Dark started. Wow, that's a very interesting background, much more from the... Uh the non-technology side of the fence, if you will, (laughs) which is very cool and interesting. So you got to kind of see it uh, hands-on in person. That's really cool. Uh, So I'm curious, in terms of uh, circadian rhythm, this is something that uh, a lot of people are starting to gain more understanding around and understand, you know, the value of it and and sleep cycles and whatnot. Uh, What is the circadian rhythm and how can we uh, improve or optimize our circadian rhythm? Sure. So the circadian rhythm is also known as the sleep-wake cycle. So that's a really descriptive term. It's like, when are you supposed to be asleep? When are you supposed to be awake? Based on humans' natural biology. And remember that we as humans are uh, very, very old. We used to live in caves. We used to not have any artificial light. And then all of a sudden, we had fire. And that was super awesome. But then we had that for like hundreds of thousands of years. And that's all the light that we had. Mm-hmm. So when you so that's what our sleep wake cycle is based on. It's really based on um, the rise and the setting of the sun. Mm-hmm. So that is what impacts our hormones. So our hormones, when it starts to get dark outside, if we had no other light around us, it would start to shift. And do you know where we get most of our light? Come in through our eyeballs. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> when the sun goes down, everything becomes dark, with the exception of the fire. And if you recall what call fires are, the fires are red they're yellow. So they have a very, very specific spectrum, which is different than the blue light from the sun. 
So when we're talking about the sleep-wake cycle, it all has to do with light, which is triggering our bodies to create hormones to either be asleep and recovering or awake and hunting. That's it. Right. So uh, fire actually does not even have uh, any wavelengths of blue or violet light, or is there some? It, it does not. Interesting. Right. So, so candlelight may be a good idea. Candlelight's a good idea so long as you don't inadvertently burn your house down. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. I'm, I'm going to agree with you on that one. Uh, so in terms of the uh, wavelengths of light that are uh, conducive to human health and biology or are harmful or detrimental, uh, people hear blue light and they, okay, this is the, the bad form of light. Are there any for other forms of light? I know we've uh, kind of mentioned uh, violet light. Are there any other wavelengths of light that are dangerous? Yeah, so let's talk about danger. Uh, so it's not that blue light is bad or dangerous. Mm -hmm. It's that too much blue light at the wrong type of day, that's what starts impacting your circadian rhythm or your sleep-wake cycle. Mm -hmm. So blue is actually a requirement for our sleep-wake cycle. And that's why at TrueDart, we have a 24-hour solution. Um, normally what you've seen on the market up until we came along was uh, blue blocking glasses. They're orange and they block all blue. Here's the problem. Remember that the sun creates a boatload of blue. It's supposed to. It tells your body that it's daytime and that you should be awake and alert. So in the modern era, if we block all blue light during the day and into the evening and at night, our bodies don't actually know when it's daytime. They're in a perpetual state of late sunset. And that's not healthy for us either. So the key is to have the right amount of blue light during the day and no blue or green or violet lights at night because it's those shades which are gonna tell your body it's dark and that your body should be making those hormones. So you're wearing glasses right now which are, uh, they're yellow. They filter out about 75% of the blue light. And the reason that this is important is because in today's modern age, we have computer screens, we have phones, we have tablets, we have our television. And what happens is we wake up at 6 a.m., we look at our phone. Our phone is putting out blue light that's brighter than what our bodies would experience in natural sunlight. So at 6 a.m., our body was just shocked into, oh my God, it's noon. Hmm. And then right. we live in noon the rest of the day because we're also, we go to the office, we're under fluorescent lights. You know what hmm. those send out? They send out not just a blue spectrum, but they also flicker at a rate that your eyeballs don't see, but that your brain does, which causes stress and makes you tired and causes eye strain. So <laughs> that was a really long answer to uh, what, what lights are bad. And the answer is none of them are bad. You just need the right amount at the right time. And in today's day and age, that means you need to manipulate the light in your environment to keep you healthy and help you sleep well. Yeah. And I think you bring up a great point. It's not just the screens, but the fluorescent lighting, the street lighting, the, the things in our environment, especially if you live in the city, that are consistently uh, disrupting the circadian rhythm and, you know, throwing our hormones off track. So uh, it's, it's all around us. It's not just the things in our immediate environment sometimes. Sometimes it's sort of an unconscious relationship, if you will. Uh, so I'm curious, uh, there are certain apps on the market, and a lot of people are familiar with these apps, and there's different types of apps and every app kind of has this different angle such as Flux, Redshift, or Twilight. Are these apps helpful? And if so, uh, do you have any recommendations as far as apps are concerned? Uh, so that's, that's a double-edged sword because it's easy for people to say, I'm using Twilight, I'm using the nighttime app, so I'm all good. Right. That's not quite how it works. As you mentioned, there's other lights around you which are going to have a negative impact. But to, to truly answer, are they helpful? The answer is yes, they will reduce eye strain because they're reducing the overall brightness. However, the way that most computer screens work is they are, they're backed by um, at least LCD and LED screens, which are the majority that are on the market, are backlit. If they were, and they're backlit by these bright white lights. And anytime you have a bright white light, it's full of the blue spectrum. So all of our screens work and we can see stuff on them because of this bright white thing that is lights that are backlit, backlighting them. Um, mm -hmm. So you could absolutely add more colors over the top, which m reduces the brightness, which helps with eye strain, but it's still sending blue into your eyes. Okay. Um, so the way that we measure this is we have a spectrometer that tells us what the different spectrums are. And it's a really easy thing to read because it shows you 
a big um, column for red, a column for green, and a column for blue. So what happens when you don't have the bright light mode on is your blue is a really, really big spike. When you turn the nighttime mode on, the blue spike goes down, but it's still there. You still have a blue spike, it's just less. So yes, it's helpful, but it's not really solving all of the problem because our, our eyes, our hormones are so sensitive that any amount of blue light is going to have a negative impact on your, on your hormones. Right. That's understandable. And, and once again, the environment, you know, beyond screens is, is definitely playing a role there as well. Uh, in, in terms of sunlight, sunlight is something that <laughs> over the years, it's gotten a good rap, a bad rap. It's, it's been all over the board. We don't really know where we stand with sunlight. Uh, what about sunlight? How, it, it, how does that influence our circadian rhythm? And, and how do we sort of balance that or create a homeostasis with sunlight and artificial light in today's sort of modern society? Yeah, that's a that's a great question, and it comes back to what um, what a lot of moms say, which is too much of a good thing or everything in moderation. Um, right. So when you think about sunlight, think about like the type of food that you might eat as well. Mm -hmm. um, if you eat too much spinach, that's probably bad for you. The right mm -hmm. amount of spinach probably good for you um, because of the vitamins and things. So sun sunlight's the same thing. Um, and there's no black and white answer because it depends on whether you live along the equator or whether you live up in Seattle, like I do. Like mm -hmm. the strength of the sun is different. So what I'm about to say, adjust for your own environment and your own skin tone. If you have red hair and blue eyes, use caution. Uh, <laughs> but in an ideal world, each person should get at least two to three hours of natural sunlight per day, ideally in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, for people who are going to get sunburnt, who think it's too much, who have eyes that are sensitive to light, and they're like, oh, the sunlight's just too bright, uh, wear a hat. <laughs> like, put on a baseball cap, and got, that will block down um, a, quite a bit of the glare uh, and make it so your brain is getting what it needs to mm -hmm. know what time of day it is. Uh, if you're going to be out on the beach all day, put on sunglasses after three-ish, four-ish hours. I've talked to a lot of professors, a lot of academics, who are in the light space, and I ask all of them the same question, how, how much sunlight is right for the eyes and the brain? And the answers always come down to about two to three hours. Don't try doing it for 12 hours. That becomes too much of a good thing. Right, yeah, that makes sense. Definitely more than the recommended 15 minutes a few years ago or whatever it was, that's a little, <laughs> a little minimal. <laughs> yes, it, it is. Get out at lunch. Um, don't wear sunglasses when you're driving to work. If you're having trouble getting outside enough, don't wear sunglasses when you're driving to work. Yes, your windshield and stuff are going to take out some of the good spectrum, but your body's still going to get plenty of blue from that and understand that it's good. Mm -hmm. Cool. Awesome. Uh, so in terms of uh, uh, the sk our skin and our, our sense of light with skin, uh, does artificial light or junk light uh, affect our skin? And does that affect our circadian rhythm and our hormones? It does, but not to the extent that your eyes do. So my best advice for that is, and this goes for your eyes and your skin as well, in your sleeping space, wherever it is that you sleep, bedroom, couch, wherever it is, you want that area to be completely and totally dark. Mm -hmm. So uh, things that you can do, cheap, easy things. I priced it out one time and it would cost less than 20 bucks to um, get some cheap blackout curtains from Amazon. Um, use electrical tape. We sell fancy dots that are pre-cut and look pretty, but you can use electrical tape to block the little light like on your smoke detector. Not mm -hmm. the whole smoke detector, just that little blue light. Right. Um, doesn't that kind of smoke detector <laughs> work? Right. But when you're in a completely dark room, that tiny little blue or green LED light actually makes a big pool of light on the floor that you can see. Um, block yeah. that. Uh, and finally, don't use an alarm clock that mm -hmm. has big bright lights on it. If you just can't handle it, if you're one of those people who has to know what time it is, then get one that has a red display and you can um, turn it down low. Like you can dim it, basically. Right. Um, so now you're sleeping in a dark environment, which means um, your skin thinks that it's dark and your um, brain thinks that it's dark and your eyes think it's dark, which means you're making all of the appropriate hormones. Even if you wake up in the middle of the night, you're not waking up to something where your eyes are going to get flashed with blue. And you're less likely to wake up because, as you mentioned, your skin, your eyes, your environment is set up for dark. 
Right. Yeah, and I will say for me, uh, just having a sleep mask is so handy uh, when I sleep, but also when I travel, because when you travel, the environments are always different. So having a sleep mask is super handy. And then, like you said, the little the little things. I have a, a Dyson HEPA air filter, and they have a little number on there, and it emits light. And there's so many little kind of things that you know, if you want to just you know tape up or whatever it may be, it's really easy, and it's kind of a one stop shop, and you're ready to go back back on the circadian rhythm track. So yeah. I, I know people that when they were traveling and they were desperate to do cover lights in the room, and they had brought different tape. I've heard of people using band-aids. Oh wow. Um, any, anything sticky <laughs> that's lights. I've heard of people dot 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 is it slash my brother <laughs> uh, that, that was that was one of them back in the day okay <laughs> that's <laughs> funny I, um, I tend to use towels I hang towels and pillows over everything in the hotel room that makes a lot of sense that's actually a really great idea that's a that's a good tip uh, it's funny you say that though. I, uh, friends and family of mine, every once in a while, I, little little things I think about, like BPA, plastic, or whatever it is. I'm like, oh, I'll keep this away, and you know, they're like, you're just crazy. I'm like, I, I just am particular. <laughs> That's all it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so well, you're you're aware. Yeah. You're not getting you're not going to get it right all the time. Nobody gets it right all the time. Like you're going to end up somewhere without your glasses. You're going to end up somewhere that has really horrible light, and it's before bed. Right. And I was recently on a flight and. One of the reasons that blue light is so pervasive in technology is just that's how it was born. Think back to like Star yeah. Trek. Like watch Star Trek on TV and look at how much blue light is on those spaceships. Right. Uh, look at the electronics around you, the clock on your stove. Like people just like blue. It shows off really well in the showroom. Right. So now there's blue everywhere because that's what sells well right. in terms of, of light things. So on airplanes, that is also what they've decided is a good idea is that when they land at night to uh, flood the cabin with this brilliant purplish blue light. It's horrible. Delta, <laughs> Delta does this. And that's why um, when, when I travel at night, I actually wear, we haven't talked about this yet, but I wear um, these True Dark Twilight glasses. Mm -hmm. And these are the only ones on the market, they're patented, that filter mm -hmm. out all of the spectrum, which include the... Um, blues, the greens, and the violets that tell your body it's awake. So when I put these on when I'm on a plane, when mm. it floods with blue, I actually can't tell. Yeah. Because nothing changes. The yeah. blue doesn't come through. So when I travel, I always use um, twilight. It's because right now, my body thinks it's dark. If I continue wearing these for about 15 minutes, uh, my, and I'm going to take them off so I don't get tired, uh, <laughs> but, but my, my brain waves. Um, anyone's brain waves, they start to shift. Yeah. So everyone has five brain waves. You've got your um, your beta and your gamma, which are your fast brain waves. That's what you and I are using right now. We're alert, we're talking, we're interacting. And then we have slower brain waves that are used when we're at rest and when we're at sleep. And those are your um, theta, delta, and alpha brain waves. And we've done EEG studies while people are blocking all of the blues and greens and violets. Really? Uh, Huh. We've done studies that show that the those fast alert brain waves mm -hmm. actually start to go down. So they're up here, put on the glasses, they start to go down, which mm. means you're becoming less alert. And at the same time, your slow brain waves, your alpha, theta, and delta, those are starting to go up. So what that means is that when people wear these, it makes them tired, which is perfect. Wear them for half an hour, an hour before you are ready to go to sleep, and um, you will go to sleep faster. Uh, you generally sleep better, and because you can see through them, like they're red, it turns the world into not a black and white movie, but a black and red movie. Right. You can study things on your computer, you can do email, you can watch TV, you can read a book to the kids, you can do all the things that you would do while your hormones are in the process of shifting, mm -hmm. which is a very nice, efficient way to not lose time by having to turn off everything and sit in the dark, waiting for your hormones to adjust so you can sleep well. Yeah. That's awesome! Wow, it, it, how how uh, how it positively influences brainwave states is quite incredible, actually. Uh, and I will add to that. It's funny you bring that up because the other night I I have the same pair right here, as everyone can see, <laughs> and I put <laughs> I put them on, and I have another uh, light uh, uh, therapy product that utilizes blue and green green wavelengths for the morning uh, for waking up. And I put them on and I turned that light on, I looked at it and it looked completely red. I couldn't see any blue green spectrum whatsoever. Uh, so it is cool to kind of see through that lens as well. It just, it, it puts, it 
allows you to be in a world of you know relaxation and to prepare your body for sleep and to once again get your circadian rhythm on track so uh, it's quite cool and I, I love the cases too the cases are so handy for traveling uh, it, everywhere I travel everywhere I go I, I you know carry my, my glasses with me I mean, a, a collapsible case is an amazing thing when you're like on the plane and it just turns into something flat um, yeah. because these 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 glasses are brilliant for travel they they help you stop jet lag by yeah. shifting the time zone that you're in. So when you remember that every every moment that you're wearing them, your body thinks it's dark, what happens when you're on a six hour flight or my husband's Australian, it's a 14 hour flight from uh, from Seattle to ditch to Australia. And when you get on the plane, you look at what time it is in your destination and you wanna start adjusting your body to that destination time zone. So if I get on a plane and it's daytime in the United States, but it's nighttime in Australia, I'm going to put on my true dark glasses so my body realizes that it's dark. I can still interact with the flight attendants. I can still eat food. I can still read a book. I can still watch a movie. I can do all of those things, but I need a night's sleep, even though it not, might not be nighttime um, where I am on the plane. I know where I'm going and I know it's nighttime there. Wear the glasses for eight hours, take them off, even if it's now dark where I am, it's light in my destination. I have just hacked jet lag, essentially, and mm -hmm. I will be much less tired and much closer to being on the time zone because uh, I had a 14 hour advantage that nobody else had. Right. So. Yeah, it's it's huge. If I, I travel a lot and for anyone that travels a lot, it's a no brainer. I mean, for your sleep and your energy, uh, it's something that you definitely want. Uh, okay, so uh, in terms of, uh, okay, what else? Okay, so uh, this is kind of interesting. Uh, it, it's just kind of an off the cuff question. In terms of uh, food or water or any sort of uh, living biological thing, are these affected by artificial light as well? And or is there any research? You mean, there? Us, you mean us digesting it before going to sleep, or how plants are and animals are impacted by? It? Yeah, well, affecting uh, I guess on the on the human uh, side more. Does it? Is there any research behind how that influences uh, the the nutrient profile or antioxidant profile or anything that kind of uh, ultimately affects our health as well? Well, there's there's the time of day that we eat. And eating after dark is generally not ideal in terms of our bodies being able to process and get the antioxidants and get everything out of that because it tends to sit in our stomach um, longer. Because remember, what our bodies are doing while we're asleep is they're cleaning house. Mm -hmm. um, our mitochondria are doing their thing. If we're busy digesting food because we ate too close to bed, then our bodies aren't able to clean house like they want to because too much blood is in our stomach trying to deal with the piece of pie we ate um, at midnight before we went to sleep. Um, so it's kind of the timing of the food as opposed to um, the food itself, based, mm -hmm. on, based on the studies that I've seen and what I know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm just, for some reason, I just, every time I go to the grocery store now and, and I see my beautiful produce under this artificial light, I'm like, I can't be good for it. I don't, I, it's just... At that point, it's already, it's already dead. Yeah. It's... But, but you bring up a good point, and I'm going to go look into that further. I can tell you that um, the grocery stores themselves and retail stores in general, they mm -hmm. very carefully light their environments mm -hmm. to keep the shoppers awake and alert, which is why stores are always bright. Mm -hmm. Generally, why stores use either fluorescent or bright white LEDs. Mm -hmm. It's to keep us, A, awake and paying attention to our shopping, Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, ironically, it's also making us tired, which makes us um, make poorer decisions about the amount and types of food that we buy. And when mm -hmm. I say tired, I don't mean sleepy tired. I mean brain strain tired. Mm -hmm. And an overabundance of light strains our brains. It makes us tired and it reduces our ability to make good decisions. Mm -hmm. So from a shopping perspective, like, that's kind of what a grocery store wants. Right. So <laughs> like, they want you to buy more well, food and they want you to buy as much junk food as possible because the margins are great as right. opposed to lettuce, which will go off and the margins aren't as great. Right. Uh, so that's another reason why when you're shopping, like the glasses that you're wearing are blocking 75% of light. And I don't think I mentioned why 75% is a key number. Uh, and the answer is because you need some blue light, but we're making way too much powerful blue light from our fluorescents, from our screens, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So allowing 
25% of the bluette to come in is telling us it's awake, but it's blocking the other 75%, which if that came through also, would be exhausting us and telling us that it's noon. Right. Uh, the glasses that I'm wearing are actually also uh, blue light blockers, um, similar to yours, except these ones block 40% of light instead of 75% of the blue light. And I get the question all the time, if 75% is ideal, why do you make some that are only doing 40? And the answer is, if you are, let's say, a lawyer, or you work in a restaurant, mm -hmm. or you're a flight attendant, and orange or red or yellow glasses aren't societally and socially acceptable, mm -hmm. um, these work. <laughs> right. So these are for people who work in environments where they can't pull off yellow because of the industry that they're working in. Right. Um, in addition, if you're a graphic designer and you want to be sure that you don't have any, um, any color shift at all, and the color shift in the yellows are minimal, but if you're a graphic designer, minimal becomes maximum really, really fast. Right. So these are also for people who are working on screens and looking at things that are where they can't have any color contrast issues. Right. So I, that's the difference. That's great. Yeah, that's that's great for people. Uh, that's great for everyday people who need something and, and want to uh, participate in biohacking their circadian rhythm. Uh, right. I, question I have about the 75%. So is that number sort of based off of the sun or is there some sort of like uh, biomimicry element, if you will, there? Or what exactly, where did that come from? Uh, it's our best it's our best effort to be sure that we aren't over or under exposing people. Okay. Um, so if we did less than that, all of a sudden people are getting overexposed. If we did more than that, all of a sudden people are getting underexposed. So right. in, in an ideal world, everyone's spending about two to three hours outside in the morning. And then you go inside, you wear your glasses when you're in junk light. Every time you go outside, you take them off. Mm -hmm. So the best way to describe the daywalkers are they are, they're indoor sunglasses. Right. Sunglasses. Right. They're the exact opposite of them. <laughs> right. So everywhere you would not wear sunglasses, wear these, and you're probably going to be pretty safe in terms of um, when to use them, and don't wear them when you're outside. Um, if you are light sensitive, if you're sun sensitive, after you've done your two to three hours, even if that's broken up in chunks of time, um, you can wear sunglasses. It's fine. Don't give yourself headaches saying, no, I must get all the sunlight in my eyes. Like, do what's comfortable to you, and mm -hmm. also realize that it's going to take your, your body and your eyes time to shift. Yeah. So you might only be able, if you never go outside or you always wear sunglasses when you're outside, you might only be able to do half an hour before you're like, wow, I'm really straining my eyes, I'm squinting, it's too much. Um, and we recognize that. And so these glasses that I'm wearing are actually, they're blue blockers and transition as well, which means you go outside with these on and you're going to get a medium sunglasses um, that will just naturally happen. Um, so we did that knowing that people come in and out of their offices or their homes um, and especially down in the LA area and the South where it's, there's a lot of glare on the roads, it's hot, um, people just wear sunglasses more. So we created a solution so they don't have to have separate sunglasses and separate uh, blue blockers, which make it easier to just integrate into their life. Just, they never take them off and they're fine. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny you say that because one of my only complaints about these uh, glasses is I can't seem to take them off. <laughs> I'll be on my computer and I'll I'll go you know clean or do something else and I'm or I'm doing anything and I'm like why do I still have these I'm like they're so comfortable it's like, they're so comfortable so it's it's not really a downside it's more of an upside but uh, they they are tremendously comfortable thankfully because some just aren't at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We, we we work we work hard on that. Yeah. Um, and it's funny though, because I, I find myself as well when I'm wearing um, when I'm wearing the version that you're wearing, I find I go outside and I also forget to take them off. And I'm like, damn it, I forgot to take them off again. Yeah. I just, I just missed some of my outside time. Yeah. Uh, so like it, just the awareness of your environment and the light in your environment and what you can do about it. Um, even when you're really, really familiar with it, you'll still get it wrong sometimes and it's not the end of the world. Yeah, totally. Awesome. So in terms of these glasses, and, and you've really uh, differentiated them from other blue blockers on the market as far as the percentages of blue, green, violet wavelengths being blocked, uh, you know, comfort is an amazing aspect. Uh, is there anything else that differentiates these or uh, differentiates the, the entire True Dark brand from other products on the market? Yeah, so it really comes down to a 24 hour solution. Um, most other products on the market are addressing just the blue mm -hmm. and that's overkill during the day 
Mm -hmm. And it is underkill, if that's a word. It's not enough at night. Uh, so yes, it requires that you have two pair of glasses instead of one. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a relatively small investment, um, mm -hmm. given that a lot of people, even insomniacs, who start using the, the True Dark system, mm -hmm. um, stop taking medications. Wow, um, very cool. Um, and and sleep and health are intertwined, and we haven't talked a ton about that. The, yeah. But we have talked about hormones. There was this. There have been a couple of studies which have shown that light at night <clears throat> reduces melatonin levels. When melatonin levels are reduced, cancer grows faster. Hmm. So there was uh, one doctor that I spoke with who showed me that he could take breast cancer from humans, put it in rats, and that it became tunable based on the melatonin levels. Wow. So if you put a small tumor into a rat and then you turned on lights at night, which made them have lower melatonin levels, the cancer would grow very, very quickly. Wow. If they then turn the lights off and the rats got healthy amounts of melatonin naturally, um, that the tumors would stop growing and or shrink. Hmm. So our, wow. our hormones matter a ton. Yeah. Um, and sleep matters a ton. So anything you can do to help your body go to sleep quickly, A, that's efficient, B, it's healthy, and then stay asleep. Like, that's one of the biggest things you can do for your health. Like, we could sit here and we could debate diet. We could debate exercise. Mm. All of those kind of vary by person. Right. And what each individual needs and what their background is. And However, sleep is the one universal that we all require. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs sleep. Some yeah. people can eat grain. Some people can't. You know what? Everyone has to sleep. It's not a choice. Yeah, whereas genetics or gut health or even epigenetics would influence other factors in a stronger way. This is something that's more conclusive all throughout. That's very true. And interesting you bring that up, too, because I saw an article recently that shared that sleep could be potentially more valuable for overall human health than diet overall. So this is a, a fast growing uh, uh, field in terms of research and, and the studies being done. And there's a lot of uh, interesting information coming out around this topic. So it just, it just makes sense. And for energy levels as well, I mean, the higher quality rest you get, the healthier your body is, the better the recovery process is, mitochondria, ATP, all these types of things. And the more energy you have, which that's, a, that's really a sort of currency in and of itself in today's world where we're constantly depleted and drained of energy from you know stressor, stressors, anxiety, uh, you know, the, the fast paced society that we live in, in, in the first world. So. Oh. And, the, and the toxins that are around yeah. us. Remember, we oh, yeah. our bodies clean house. So to yeah. help our bodies get rid of that toxin. Like you can use glutathione, you can use diet, you can use chocolate, you can use fiber. You can mm -hmm. do all of those things. But mm -hmm. if you're not sleeping, all those other things that you're doing during your waking hours are being compromised. Right. Yeah. So this is about upgrading. And this is about upgrading sleep. And, and that makes, it just simply makes sense. Uh, let's talk a bit about the true light uh, as a sort of uh, flip side solution for combating uh, uh, the you know artificial and junk light and, and uh, share that with our, our viewers. Yeah, so um, we, we started out uh, blocking blue, but we're not just a blue blocking company. Like that's not all we're doing. We're looking at light universally and saying, um, how can we use it for our overall health? And red light therapy is something that's been around for quite a while. Um, and there are quite a few products on the market that, that, do, that use red light and uh, near infrared light in order to do things like enhance blood circulation, reduce inflammation, um, it helps with collagen by reducing scars, wrinkles, fine lines, those types of things. Um, it can also um, decrease pain. So light isn't all bad. Light is also mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. So there are, there are certain wavelengths of light that have been studied um, over time. And the most common ones that you see out there are 660 uh, and 850 nanometer wavelengths. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones that you see generally. And those are really good for um, collagen production and for skin. And when we were researching to see if this was something that can be improved upon, just like we looked at 
the glasses and we're like, wow, there's science that came out in the late 90s and no one's changed their products to adjust for this new knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, we did the same thing with uh, our new true light uh, photobiome photobiomodulation product. And what we learned was that while 660 and 850 are the most commonly used, um, there's another red spectrum, this 630 spectrum, which also has a big impact on mitochondria. So we built our product to include that. And then because we pay attention to the sleep-wake cycle and what yellow light can do, we also added yellow because most people aren't paying attention to the outside of their skin. They're working on their skin from down deep, which is where your deeper wavelengths, your deeper red wavelengths are, mm -hmm. but not pay attention, attention to the actual surface itself, just assuming that it will magically get fixed from the inside out. However, the yellow spectrum has shown to um, work on the skin surface itself. So what we've created is we've created a, I have a box of it, I'm also sitting on one with my feet because you can use it anywhere. It's a little bit bright. Um, this is the True Light Energy Square. Uh, wow. The lights that you see that look like they are off are not actually off. They're near infrared light, and they're doing stuff with whether <laughs> you can see it or not. Right. Uh, so. So you sit so that at the bottom of your feet, facing up. Is that how you? you yeah, it's like my okay. my feet are just resting on it right now. Getting charged. It's not. <laughs> it's not just that. Um, it does stuff to the skin where you put it mm -hmm. because it's interacting with your cells and your mitochondria. Mm -hmm. Your cells and your mitochondria aren't static in your right. body. Mm -hmm. So I'm impacting cells and mitochondria that are around my feet. Those will eventually move somewhere else in my body. Right. Um, I use it also, I'll put it on my, uh, my chest. I stick it under my shirt. I stick it under my shirt in the back and have it in the back. Um, so you can, you can treat different areas of your body. It only takes about 20 minutes. You also have to remember that your body can only do so much with its mitochondria and cells at a time. So like using it for 10 hours a day doesn't actually help. You really only need it for maybe an hour in a couple of different spots on your body um, mm -hmm. a few times a week to start to see a difference. Um, now the big question is, how do we know that it's doing anything? <laughs> and <laughs> the answer to that, um, comes down to a there are a whole bunch of studies out there in the market um, and b specific to the true light energy square is we tested the nitric oxide um, levels oh, very and cool. if your cells near mitochondria are being impacted your nitric oxide levels will go up so what we did was we tested people before they use the energy square and then after using the energy square for a total of 20 minutes on one area of the body we tested it again and the nitric oxide levels increased after just 20 minutes of use very um, cool so that's that's how we know that it works and then just because we overstudy perhaps a little bit um, we're looking at what else can we do to take something that's already a really cool solution and make it an even more impactful solution is we added the ability to have either constant mode and that's what you see in all other red light devices they're either on or they're off. Uh, we added a pulsing mode as mm -hmm. well. So uh, we can we can make these little lights uh, flash if we want to. Mm -hmm. so they flash like that. And looking directly into them, um, it will give you a headache. But <laughs> when you just use them in um, pulsing mode, you, you get a little bit of a difference. Mm -hmm. um, when you pulse, it actually helps your cells heal more rapidly. And when it's a continuous constant um, burst, it sedates the cells in order to help reduce the pain. So by having these two different modes, it allows you to choose between um, you want to heal or you want something to heal better. Hmm. Um, so that's something that's that's unique on the market too. Very cool. And for those of you watching who aren't familiar with nitric oxide, it's essentially a mole. It's a. It's a. I believe it's a gas, uh, mm -hmm. and it, it has to do with circulation and and. Uh, uh, the blood flow, and I believe uh, red blood cells, I want to say. I, I forget. Yeah. yeah. So it's it, really good for cardiac issues, yeah. cardiac concerns. It, it helps your blood flow better and it helps oxygenate it. Yeah. So it's, that's, this is beneficial for that as well, which is, which is amazing, which is really cool. Awesome. Cool. Well, uh, I think that's everything. I appreciate your time so much. Is there anything else you'd like to add or share? Uh, that any any future plans that anything uh, True Dark is working on or True Light or uh, any exciting things in the pipeline? <laughs> We do have future plans, but not that I can share with you here, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
but uh, a continuing expansion of the True Light uh, product line. What, one of the things that we are careful about when we're developing products is we want them to be um, affordable mm -hmm. and we want them to be very, very usable. So that's mm -hmm. why when we first came out, we had these little triangular cases. Everyone's like, that's ridiculous. Why is your case triangular? It doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. And we would be like, it's because it collapses, because it makes it more usable. Um, it's the same thing with our glasses. Uh, we design them to be tough, to be anti-scratch, mm -hmm. uh, anti-glare. So we do all these things because we want people to actually use the products. We offer mm -hmm. generous um, money-back guarantees and timing so people can try it. And if they're like, oh gosh, that's not for me, that's cool. Thanks for trying it. Um, send it back. It's fine. Yeah, you have a, a money-back guarantee for, for, for how many days exactly? Uh, it's 90 days. We have a 90-day so, guarantee on the glasses. So three, you yeah, can figure months. out if they work for you or not. Um, yeah. Test it, biohack it. <laughs> exactly, like take them home, use your aura ring or whatever it is that you're using to track your sleep. Yeah. And you have to go to sleep sooner and if you sleep better. Like, yeah. That's a totally valid thing to do. We encourage it. Awesome. It and you said the cases collapse. Does mine do that? Am I just not biohacking it, correctly no. here? Yes, yes. <laughs> you, you, you use your strength. When you open them up, push hard on the, on the edges. Just push hard right there and it will collapse. I don't want to break it but um if you break it i'll send you a new one you're not gonna break it just push hard oh it just on. fold it just folds in right there it fold, it folds right there so oh, just push hard wow I'll send you a new one. i did i'm learning all sorts of stuff today <laughs> that's amazing that's that's great for travel that's really cool wow okay well that's good to know cool awesome <laughs> well thank you yeah. well thank yeah thank you for having me this has been a really fun discussion Super of, fun. of course it was a lot of fun and it's cool to hear your history and just understanding you know your background from from the farm to technology i mean it's amazing it's such a cool story and it's super insightful. Uh, for those of you hearing this information and you want to learn more about True Dark products or True Light, click the link below uh, to, to learn about their products, to sign up for their newsletter, and just to get more information in general. Once again, thanks a lot, and we'll see you in the next interview. Have a great day.